Hey, Ken Hackathorn here for Wilson Combat, another edition of Gun Guys. Again, my buddy Bill Wilson. And one of the things I've asked Bill to basically show us is what guns he uses. What's the typical range guns? Bill still shoots a lot. He's got his own private range. And when he goes out to the range, everybody's kind of curious. What is it that Bill Wilson uses? So he's kind of laid his pistols out that are his normal, what we'll call everyday use guns. And we kind of go through them based upon the order of popularity. Of course, I think it's no surprise that the gun he probably shoots a lot is a Wilson Combat 1911. The interesting thing is this is probably your go-to range gun. It's a Wilson Combat uh, X-Tac Elite 9mm. Yep. Tell us about the gun and why you like it. Well, first off, there's a, there's a, uh, a little bit of history to this gun. All right. I mean, the reason I have this specific gun um, you know, every now and then you have you have a customer that no matter what you do, you just can't you know satisfy. Never them. please them. You know they you know and and so this gun come back, you know the, the gun just absolutely is unreliable. The gun the gun won't work, and you know so the gun was returned. They got the guy you know shot it some and all that kind of stuff. So it ended up getting sent down to me, you know, for me to check it out, and um, I got to shooting it. I you know I'm having like no problems with it and it turned out well that, you know that's about the specs i like on a, on one of my guns and whatever so i decided i just keep it well you know now i'm you know maybe fifty thousand rounds later and i don't know that i've ever had a malfunction with this gun that wasn't you know due to a primer loaded sideways or upside okay. down or you know some some sort of ammunition related yeah. related i mean and it's trust me it's it's ran dirty a lot and you know yeah. all that kind of stuff and so you know as 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 you know i'm a, I'm a big fan of the four inch barrel of the yeah. compacts i've always been a big fan of the compact size size guns and uh because you know i i've with my old 64 year old eyes i seem to shoot better with the shorter, shorter sight radius yeah. and and i and i also feel like i get back on target just a little bit quicker because a little less muzzle jump with a with a short gun than there is a long gun and and the other big factor that that shorter magwell, and it's only you're only talking like a half inch here, but it's on, on a single column magazine. It's amazing how much easier it is to get that magazine in there. You you don't have to be near as straight in the magazine as you do with a full size gun. You know you can kind of come in come and get it, you know, and where with a full size, you almost got to do one of those numbers and go straight in. Yeah. So and it's a cone barrel. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a, this is a standard you know X Tac Elite. I mean it's you know it's just our. No, nothing special about it. It's just an X-Tac Elite. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this... Well, I've seen you shoot it. It, uh... This puts away, you don't seem to suffer much performance-wise with that thing. You, you've given me a run for the money more. <laughs> and, of course, one of the other guns, which I know you use a lot because it's one of your one of your favorite guns, the Breda 92, and I'm going to guess that this is probably an early version of the... Uh, Tactical Elite, the Brigadier Tactical. As a matter of yeah. fact, I look at the serial number, it's uh, serial number 200. Yeah, that, that was out of the very first batch, batch. of guns we come in because yeah. they um, they basically uh, uh, skipped the first 100 guns, you know, because we knew, you know, there's going to be some people wanting those unique serial numbers, stuff like that. And so we started receiving guns at number 100. So, um, yeah. well, I know I got one. You called me up and asked me if I wanted one. I tell you, I have. Nobody has as many Bretas in the world. I'm not sure Breta has as many as you do, but <laughs> I remember you called me and said, well, you need one of these things. And I've been up Bretas. I'm Bill, I don't know. I got a lot of Bretas. And I've got two or three or so guns that Ernie turned tuned for mm -hmm. me, so they're really nice guns, good shooting guns. But he said, no, you got to have one of these. And you talked me into my, uh, I bet serial number 46 was the year I was born. Mm -hmm. So I've got it, and you're right. I mean, a superb gun, and I know I've seen you shoot this thing, and I'm going to guess this one's got a few rounds through it too. Oh yeah, this this gun has been shot a lot. This 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 is the when I, when I shoot a Breda, you know, doing training or just for fun with it, shooting with a group, you know, our shooting group. This is the Breda that I typically shoot. Yeah, and this is a unique gun in that um, a number of years ago when you started talking about what. Where do I want to go in Wilson Combat, and what's the market? And we knew the market was about concealed carry pistols. Mm -hmm. We—that's really where the—that's probably eighty percent of the mm -hmm. pistol market today. And one of the things we all agreed is that hey, everybody want, loves a Glock 19. It's the right size and old 15 rounds of nine millimeter. But I remember you talking about how great it would be to have a gun like a Glock 19 
but has the advantage of an 1811 trigger and 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 the controls and all mm -hmm. those things. And you started brainstorming. We talked on the phone mm -hmm. and talked about it. And the process, most people realize, really went, went along for quite a time. A while. And oh, I yeah. remember you sent me one of the original t first 10 sample guns mm -hmm. to, to test. And well, even, even before that, remember I was out visiting you in Idaho out there and I was showing you renditions of the gun on the computer. And yeah. I think I showed you the, you know, the plastic model we had molded just for the, yep. you know, the feel of the gun and kind of yep. stuff like that. So, you know, you, you were in the early yeah, you know, stages really of this. Yeah, we talked about a lot of things. And, you know, it's amazing today that I still run into people that don't quite get everything this gun's got. To, I mean, I tell people, something as simple, most people don't pick on is the trigger is wider than the 1911 trigger. It's, it's actually wider, but the wider pad gives you the perception of a lighter trigger mm -hmm. pull. Yeah. And there are so many, I always tell people, this is probably almost 40 years of Bill Wilson's experience of what we want in a pistol. And I, and we all know, anybody that's ever knows anything about firearms design, you do not just design a gun overnight that's gonna work. Yeah. It's a lot of money and a lot of effort. But the X9 is, in my opinion, by the way, we, we spoke in an earlier episode when we talked about your Bredas. My experience is the Bredas is an incredibly reliable gun, but I think this pistol will match any Breda 92 as far yeah. as reliability. Yeah, we just we just don't have any reliability issues with them. And, and you know, I, I did so much testing on these guns. I mean, when we finally got, we finally got this gun on the market, I was so sick of shooting this gun. I, I didn't even hardly shoot one for months after that. You know, I mean, I was so, I was so tired of, <laughs> of I, I, of can tests, of, I of, put about 10,000 rounds through the test gun. I can tell you, yeah. I was pretty tired of it too when I got. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. I, I was, I, it, I had to take a break from it for a while, but I mean, we put a lot of effort in this, in this gun. And like you, like you said, I mean, they're unbelievably reliable. Yeah. I mean, and I think it's kind of an interesting thing that I know you guys are working your tail off to deliver guns to the customers. But if I remember correctly, you told me recently that as about as fast as you ship them out, the orders keep coming in. So your backlog is kind of about where you were when you started. It's just a constant. Well, actually, the back backlog just keeps inching a little bit, a little bit worse. We're shipping them just a little bit slower than what the new orders are coming in. So we're not we're not eating that elephant too yeah. awful fast. And I get people ask me, so hey Ken, where are there going to be different variations of this? And I said, well, when they get caught up, is when <laughs> yeah. you'll see. Yeah. That, you know. Well, there's an, another gun on the table here. That I'll be honest with you, we've talked and you you told me that, hey, look, we've got to address the polymer frame pistol market. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the future. Mm -hmm. And you told me you've got some guns that you're testing and trying out. And I got to admit, this one kind of surprised me in that I knew you're working on the, on the Glock. We all kind of knew mm -hmm. that. But you've kind of, I think, again, you're pretty savvy about the marketplace that if this pistol is going to be the new U.S. military standard, there's, the future for it's going to be pretty bright. Yeah. So, and you told me you'd bought this is an out of the box uh, is, Breda, or a C320 compact, yeah. and you said you've been shooting a lot lately and you like it. I have to admit, if I could find one with a trigger that good, you talk about lucking out, <laughs> that would turn me on too. But what's your impressions of the 320? I mean, I I like the gun personally. I mean, it, you know, it just if I just pick it up right out of the box, you know, it, it's right up there with a Beretta for me on something how well I can shoot it. Mm. You know, a, a stock in the box Glock, I can't stand it. I'll just be honest with you, I can't stand the guns. The, the, the factory trigger pinches my trigger finger. You know, I, I don't like the sights on them. They typically aren't very accurate. The triggers are really heavy and gritty and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, you know, I've, I've got three of these I'm testing because we're gonna start doing work on the, on the SIG. SIG 320 series. I got two compacts and a, and a full size. And this this one got the best trigger of the three, but they've all, th all three got very shootable triggers. And they all three are, are very accurate guns. I've got, I've got no complaints whatsoever with the accuracy. You know, we're on the Glock. I mean, most of them with a the factory barrel, you know, I just don't like inaccurate guns. You know, when, when, I, when I stand there and, and I feel like I'm shooting my best, and at 20 yards, I, I can't make a headshot on an IDPA target, you know, when I'm pretty confident it's not me. The gun's just not accurate enough, yeah. you know? Well, I know, I'm, you know, I, I've, I use Glocks a lot because I'm, that's the world mm -hmm. I live in. Um, in my experience, the new Gen 5 to the best Glocks they've ever made. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they tend to shoot better. Um, the triggers are 
usually better. Although we both know Glocks vary quite a bit. Of all the weapons on the market, their triggers and even accuracy is very good. But I think the Gen 5, I told somebody the other day, the Gen 5 is the best Glock they've ever made. I am convinced by Gen 7, they will actually have reached per perfection. <laughs> but um, Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much a full. I see this is one of your newer packages from, from Wilson Company. Yeah, this, this, this gun here is pretty much you know, tricked out about everything we, we do to the gun. It's, you know, it's got our match barrel in it. It's got uh, the, the Vickers tactical sights. It's got all kinds of trigger work on it. I mean, this gun's got a, you know, well, you shot it. It's, it's, got, a, it's, got, a, it's got a very usable trigger on it. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, it's, I, as Glocks go, I like, I like this gun. But if I had to take, if I had to pick up a Glock 19, you know, from a dealer, load it up and stick it in my belt, I wouldn't be very happy about that, but you know, I'd be just fine if that was a Beretta or a Sig 320. Yeah. My thing with the 320 is, I can remember a year or so ago, I was ran into some guys from the Sig Sauer out west, and good guys, and we were talking guns. They were at a an event where they're promoting Sig Sauer products, and I said, well, when I can get one of these with a the manual safety, then I, I'm going to get one. And the guy, why? And I said, because they're unsafe without it. And the guy got kind of should we say, confrontational about that. And one guy kept real quiet. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, it's real simple. This pistol's not safe without a manual safety. If you drop it, it'll go off. If it lands on the back of the slide, it'll go off. And they treated me like it was a whore in church. Well, about a week later, should we say, that thing exploded. Mm -hmm. And everybody found out what was the real story. Now, again, it's a pistol that is still maturing. And to the six hours credit, once they had to bite the bullet, they went and addressed it, and they mm -hmm. apparently have got that condition under control. And I think the gun will continue to evolve because the U.S. military is going to force them. We all know that when the Beretta was adopted, they had to make changes in that gun. Well, same thing with the, with the 1911. Absolutely. I mean, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're I mean, everything. They're, look at yeah. look. At, we all remember when the M16 was adopted; it wasn't exactly a pretty picture. Uh -huh. You know, 50 years later, it's one of the best service rifles mm -hmm. on the planet. So I think this gun has probably got tremendous future. Uh, and I think once you guys start tweaking it and start offering some some changes, I think uh, you're right. I, my guess is they will be, uh, in the coming decade, one of the more popular handguns on the marketplace. I think so. But, so this is kind of the, the these meat are my, potatoes of what you go to the range with. These, these, are, these are my working guns right here. You know, that's what, you know when I go out... Shooting for fun, shooting with our group, you know, doing training, you know, depending on what kind of guns people got in the class, stuff like that. These are the guns I typically shoot. Okay, folks, there it is. The information about the guns that Bill Wilson really uses when he goes to the range. Hey, listen up. Subscribe to the Wilson Combat YouTube channel. A lot of good info coming your way. Stay safe, folks. We'll see you down the road. Mm -hmm.